We are the only inland spaceport that has a suborbital spaceflight corridor that's strictly assigned to us, that is not part of the Department of Defense or military operating area or restricted airspace. We're the first ones to have developed that and still the only ones to have had that approved by the Federal Aviation Administration. But the corridor I designed is about 150 nautical miles long, so you can go up towards liberal Kansas and then turn around and head back this way. You ignite your rocket engine, whether you're a, a uh, air-launched vehicle or a self-contained vehicle, and then you basically do an arc. You ignite the rocket, you accelerate probably at about a 90-degree angle for a period of time. You become weightless. You're up there and you see the black of uh, space and the curvature of the Earth and all these beautiful things, and then 15 or 20 minutes later, you're coming back downhill. So that's basically what a suborbital flight is all about. So the facility offers a tremendous amount of capability, not only for space, uh, but for aeronautics. And there are only right now seven licensed spaceports in all of North America. So Oklahoma has an opportunity to bring to this facility into the state, uh, I think without question, you know, high-tech opportunities related to space development, space manufacturing, space operations. And do you have some tenants based out here now? We don't have a space tenant based out here now. We do have a uh, maintenance, uh, repair, and overhaul aircraft facility that's based out of Bristow. We're hoping that the commercial space industry grows and our spaceports become even more closely linked, that there'll be the opportunity from point-to-point -point flights. I was... Uh, approached by the director of the New Mexico spaceport about developing a corridor between the New Mexico spaceport and the Oklahoma spaceport. Their director would like to have the very first point-to-point -point service between the New Mexico spaceport and the Oklahoma spaceport. So I think that's, that's a great idea. And what we actively have going on right now is achieving a higher operational altitude for Armadillo Aerospace. Mm -hmm. They have a vertical takeoff and vertical landing vehicle uh, that does a powered ascent and a powered descent all the way back to the surface. And they've been here before. They've made three flights from our facility in the past. It has the capability to fly up to altitudes of 62 miles or higher. Mm -hmm and they want to do initial high altitude flight test and we were the first spaceport that he conducted his flight test from so we were very happy about that. Um, talk to me a little about Rocket Plane. They, I know they haven't really been active for about two years. No, now, right? it's basically old news. Rocket yeah. Plane's not around any longer. We were focusing on the activities of those who are uh, actually up and running. As I mentioned, x -Corps. They're still very interested in utilizing our facility, not only for flight tests, but uh, for future flight operations. They're the ones that have the Lynx vehicle. Uh, John Carmack, uh, another one who has a tremendous potential. He wants to fly from our facility pending authorization from the FAA to fly to higher altitudes. It gives us an opportunity to host a lot of different type of activities, whether they be suborbital, for research and development or actually for commercial space or we feel that it gives Oklahoma a huge advantage.